Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is why do we check the refrigerant charge level with total superheat when we have a fixed orifice and subcooling when we have a thermostatic expansion valve, also known as a TEV or TXV. To understand this, we need to know that our superheat is going to fluctuate when we have a fixed orifice on our indoor coil. So this is our indoor coil, also known as the evaporator coil. Out here is the condensing unit, and here is the condenser coil. So what's happening is we have high pressure, high temperature, subcooled liquid refrigerant entering this metering device, regardless of which one it is. Then it's going to turn into 80% liquid, 20% flash gas down here. So that's the refrigerant. The refrigerant circulates through this, this tubing as it's absorbing heat from the air crossing this evaporator coil. So what happens is it turns from a 80% liquid 20% flash gas and it changes into maybe a 50-50 mixture by the time it gets here. Then by the time it gets here, maybe it's 80% vapor now and 20% liquid. By the time it the refrigerant travels all the way up to here, now it's completely into the vapor state. And once it's in the vapor state, it can increase in temperature. So the entire time while this refrigerant's in the saturated state, which means liquid and vapor both exist at the same time, there is no temperature increase even though the refrigerant is absorbing heat from the air crossing the coil. But once it turns into a completely vapor state, it's able to increase in temperature, and the increase in temperature between where it comes out of the saturated state as a vapor and where it exits the evaporator coil is called the superheat. So the job of the TXV is to maintain that superheat regardless of the heat load going across this this coil. So even if it's hot and humid in the building, or if it's maybe it's 70 degrees and it has low humidity, this TXV is going to try to maintain the same amount of superheat towards the top of this coil. And so it's doing that by taking a temperature measurement and a pressure measurement. That's the same thing that we do when we check our total superheat. We're checking a pressure measurement and we're going to take a temperature measurement of the refrigerant going through the tubing. So if this is holding the superheat steady, then we can't check the refrigerant charge level at the outdoor unit with the total superheat method. We need to check it with subcooling because if we have more subcooling, then that means we're slightly overcharged. And if we have less subcooling than what's on the rating plate, then that means we're undercharged. So that's where the refrigerant, the, the fluctuation can be measured at to see if we're low or high on refrigerant. It's over here in the condenser coil. If we have a, a fixed orifice such as one of these right here, this is a piston chamber and there's a piston inside, this has no way to add extra refrigerant into this evaporator coil during a high heat load, and it has no way to lower the flow of the refrigerant into the evaporator coil during a low heat load. So what's gonna happen is the superheat across this evaporator coil is gonna change when you have a fixed orifice as the metering device. This right here is a capillary tube. So you have a strainer and then it goes into a capillary tube. Once again, it's a fixed orifice hole size. So saturated refrigerant, uh, that the amount of saturated refrigerant in this evaporator coil compared to the, the amount of superheat in this evaporator coil is going to change depending on the heat load. So that's why we check the refrigerant charge with the total superheat method when we have a fixed orifice. So to tie this together, it's important to realize that while the system's running, your liquid line is going to have seven to 11 times more refrigerant in it than the vapor line will. Likewise, in the coil where the saturated state is, you're going to have more refrigerant in this part of the coil than you will in the, the part that's just vapor. So say this part of the coil right here is superheated vapor, and you need to have superheated vapor because the uh, refrigerant compressor in this outdoor unit is a vapor compressor. If it has liquid or saturated refrigerant entering in, it's going to damage the compressor. So if you do measure say one, two, three degrees of total superheat, you at least know that your, your compressor is safe. However, we usually are looking for a higher total superheat than that while the system's running. It's also important to know that if you have a fixed orifice, then if you add refrigerant into the low side of the system while it's running, your superheat is going to decrease. So this area right here is gonna shrink, which means that you're gonna have more refrigerant in the saturated state. So as you're adding refrigerant into the system, you're increasing the saturated state in this coil right here. The area where you have superheated vapor is less and less. So that's where your refrigerant's going when you're adding refrigerant into the system when you have a, a fixed orifice. And as long as you have the correct superheat over here, you're going to have subcooled liquid. 
So you're not going to be able to measure how much refrigerant's in the system based on the, the subcooling when you have a fixed orifice. But if you do have the correct amount of superheat, you will have the proper amount of subcooling as well. If you have a TXV metering device and you're adding refrigerant into the low side of the system, then what's going to happen is this TXV is going to be holding the superheat steady regardless of the amount of refrigerant that you're putting into this low side for the most part. And the vapor pressure may not increase even if you're adding refrigerant if you have the TXV. So what's happening is if this is holding the amount of superheat steady, that means the amount of refrigerant in the saturated state is remaining the same. And all that's happening is as you're adding refrigerant, your liquid line pressure is increasing and your subcooling is increasing. So that's why it's important to not try to set this vapor pressure at a certain pressure that you're used to or, you know, based on the outdoor ambient temperature. It's really important that you check the refrigerant charge level with the subcooling method when you have a TXV. Likewise, if you have a fixed orifice such as this right here, then it's important to make sure that you check the charge with the total superheat method to make sure that the compressor is safe and it has superheated vapor entering it and to make sure that you're at the maximum efficiency for your system. We go over all the details of these things in our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. So checking the refrigerant charge, preparing a system for refrigerant, all the procedures that we use in the field, and troubleshooting. So you can check this out in the full outline over at acservicetech.com, and this is also available over at amazon.com. We also have a workbook out that's a companion to our paperback. This has 1,000 questions that pertain to what I really want you to know in order to apply that in the field. And we have our answer key available. So this is a self-study guide. And we also have quick reference cards for using these in the field when you're in front of the air conditioning units, such as our, our superheat and subcooling guide. We have a PT chart. We also have refrigerant weights. We have a troubleshooting guide right here. And we also have our frozen evaporator quill and how to troubleshoot what the problem is with that. So all these products are available over at acservicetech.com and also over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Stick channel.